Hi and welcome to video 2 for my crashed BMW. As you can see the BMW M135i sat on the drive here and that's because I've had some other work going on in the garage but it's all empty now and it's time to get it back in there so we can get stuck into some of this work. In the last video for the crashed BMW we had a look at what the problems are with the car and also a good tour around it. But to be honest, when editing the last video, I missed out some important footage from underneath that driver's side wheel arch area. So I'm going to go over that now. I'm just letting you know so you don't wonder why the bumpers magically appeared back on the car again. So with the wheel off, it's a good chance to have a good nosy around under here. This is the front corner that's got the damage. Okay, well the first thing is, even though this uh, disc has got some surface rust on it, that'll just clean up as soon as you start using them so I'm not concerned about that and they're actually uh, got a lot of life on them and no lip here which would be indicative of a lot of wear on that disc so they're almost like brand new discs are these and that's backed up by the brake pads that you can see here well you can see that they're almost brand new they're like door stops so that's good news nice new front brakes I'm still not sure about the yellow calipers though I'll be honest I'm thinking about going to red because I've got a nice red interior on this car uh, but something to see here is this little access hatch through the wheel arch liner that's the back of the headlight unit you can see there you can see that little uh, hatch is missing maybe it's one of the things that are in the boot of the car and maybe this bmw crashed before because there are a few screws missing under here so you know that one's missing i haven't removed that should be one there as well so a couple of screws missing from under the wheel arch indicates there's been a bit of work done in there before not sure what it is it also speaks of shoddy workmanship as well to be honest because there's no way that i'd just leave screws out of something like that but maybe you know maybe that's just me uh, I'm not too concerned because the cars in general underneath when we did that inspection is looking pretty good condition and at least they put new stoppers on the front so they're not worn down to razor blades but if we look through here as well you can see um, I don't know if it's an intercooler or an oil cooler or what it is uh, but it's the thing that we know is broken uh, underneath the headlight so we'll have a quick look at that yeah so the chances are whatever this is behind here is broken uh, but we'll know soon because I'm sure we'll be getting this bumper off soon let's get on with it just get those screws out drop that down and then we can start uh, having a little bit more of a look about what's going on behind here okay so now that I can see this in more detail I can see uh, that this is an oil cooler so it's likely that it's uh, an engine oil cooler or something like that and if it was smashed that means oil would be all over the place so it looks like hopefully it's uh, not all smashed and I don't need to replace it but there is some plastic kind of um, trim that guides air through this oil cooler and that will need to be replaced we'll have a look at that from the front yeah so here it is from the front you can see all sorts of smashed stuff in there there's like a bit of a rubber seal here and uh, but luckily the oil cooler does look all right back there so we've got the bumper off and um, it's not just a case of popping another one back on again because there's quite a lot of supporting plastics and structure behind and a lot of it's broken so for example this thing uh, this is kind of like a cowling that feeds uh, air into that oil cooler we looked at a minute ago and that's just one example so it's kind of like the not very sexy part of accident damage car repair is identifying all these little pieces uh, because it's nice going and getting a nice new bumper or bonnet or wing and bolting it on or getting it painted but this is a time consuming bit all the little brackets and plastic pieces behind so we'll come back to that in a minute but I'm going to get this headlight out now because we can definitely see this one shot. And ordinarily I'd be consulting back to my e-manual and finding out where all the anchoring points are. But to be honest most of them are just smashed away. So you can see it's hanging on by a thread here. There's just one bolt at the top uh, remaining and then we'll be able to pull that out. And no doubt there'll be some electrical plugs at the back but since it's coming out anyway it'll be a lot easier to reach in there. Uh, with it detached so uh, let's get to that okay so that's the last one 
this should just lift up and out now and as I expected there's just one electrical connector at the back which I have to undo and there we go one absolutely mullered headlight removed and it's worth showing this for future reference this is the bracket that I just undid here and it slides in and out and you just tighten it up in the position you want it and then that will allow you to set the position of the headlight relative to the bonnet and the wing to get that line correct and now with the headlight out I have an even better view behind here and there's more evidence that the owner of this BMW crashed it before and one of the clues is there's tie wraps here that have been used to hold things together so there's one at the top here and if I just pan to the bottom then there's another one down here as well and this whole thing the position of it I'm not 100% sure it's correct because I think that maybe this might be just slightly bent or maybe needs adjustment so uh, I'll look at that and I'll try to make a better job of it when I put it all back together again in fact here's a uh, another even better clue that this bracket isn't quite where it should be because this is bent so if I straighten that up then it would probably move all of this um, part of the bracket down a bit so we'll get that all sorted out another thing to keep an eye on is these oil cooler pipes that are just behind here a little bit hard to see but there's a risk of the bottom one uh, rubbing against this chassis arm and this rubber um, it's like a little protective sleeve probably needs to slide up to make sure that this steel pipe doesn't rub on the chassis leg just there because it'll wear that steel pipe through in no time so as i mentioned earlier this car has uh, clearly been crash damaged before and the thing is when you're repairing crash damaged cars is it helps if you're inquisitive and you keep your eyes out so yes i've been focused on the obvious stuff you know you've seen i've done the tie bar i've got a new bumper on the way and all this sort of stuff but little things like um, there's a missing screw down on this oil cooler that'll make it move around a bit and it might fatigue the oil lines coming to it uh, and cause a problem further down the line and then the other one is this bit of a bracket's bent here on the copart advert it said bonnet will not open now I managed to get the bonnet open with a bit of pulling on it, going and pulling the lever, lifting and this sort of stuff. But of course we want it to work a lot better than that once this car is fully repaired. And one of the things that I think is contributing to it is this steel bracket here, uh, which is bent because one of the bonnet latches sits right above it. So if this bonnet latches out of position, even ever so slightly, it might make it difficult to release. Now this might look um, thin and flimsy, and easy to straighten out but I've had a good pull on this by hand and I've had no luck at all you know it hasn't moved even a millimeter and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out with a slide hammer and if you guys haven't used a slide hammer before I'll show you what they're useful for so first of all if you wanted to get behind there and tap it out with a normal hammer you can see you just can't get in with it and if I was to um, lever that then I'd start to bend that front beam and not the rear one and so it'd become twisted so it'd be pretty awkward but what I have here is a lightweight slide hammer that I have from a dent removal kit that I bought off of uh, Amazon and normally this end would just attach to um, some suckers or something like that you'd glue it on and then you'd pull the dent out with the uh, hammer so basically what I've got is a block of wood that I've drilled a hole in and I'm just going to stick it behind there like that so let's poke that through and then on the other side I've got a penny washer and then I've just got a nut that goes on the end of the shaft and I'll just show you what the setup looks like now that I've got it in place so let's see if this works so I haven't actually tried it with this lightweight slide hammer before so so we'll see now it helps if you're um, with your left hand you're pulling the direction that you want that to go so you've got some tension on it already and then this weight is just adding to the force that's already being applied so obviously it'd be a lot easier with a heavier duty slide hammer uh, but this is what I've got and as you can see it's a lot straighter than it was so it might seem a little bit extreme but I'm actually going to pop out this headlight it only takes a couple of minutes to do it and there's a couple of reasons for that really the first one is it'll give me a really good frame of reference for what might be missing from the other side or be damaged the other thing is just inside here there's like a little air duct which looks like it feeds fresh air to the air box which is just in the engine bay here 
and I can see that it's loose and wiggling around and it's not seated properly. So I just want to have a look and just make sure that everything in this area is correct. It'll only take me a few extra minutes to do it and then I'll know it's right. So there's just a few extra screws to take off and then this will come out. Some of them are back under the wheel arch and I'll go and do those now. So this is the first one that's at the back under the wheel arch here and it's a little bit loose to be honest so I'd have expected that to be tighter. So I suspect this might have been removed in the past as well. And then just in here there's a missing one so I haven't removed that. And if we just look up here there's another little screw uh, to undo. All of these are slotted as well, so they'll allow adjustment of the position of this headlight when we refit it. So there'll be a bit of messing around in order to get it to fit nice. Okay, be careful with this, 500 quid's worth, second hand. And just another little interesting thing is, there's a screw from the uh, top slam panel coming down into that bracket that's clearly loose there as well. So that won't be helping the alignment of the slam panel and the bonnet latch where it comes down. So I might as well get that tightened up while I'm here. Right, let's have a look and see what we can learn. So the first thing is this bit of the tab here, which you can see it's actually leaning back slightly. And because this side hasn't been smashed, then I assume that it's meant to be leaning back slightly. So we can check that at the other side. The other thing is, do you remember this upright here from the other side? And I said it should be absolutely straight. Well, it was pretty obvious, but that's confirmation. And this this is the air box uh, feed pipe. I don't know if there's meant to be something on this end of it. It looks like there should because there's like some little clips and I'll check the bumper to see if they came off with it. But now because I've got the access, I can slide that back and clip it into the air box properly. Just needs a little bit of encouragement to help it slide under back there. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this air box out uh, because I don't think I'll ever get the intake pipe on properly. And uh, I want to check that everything's all right under it, you know, because it's loose at the moment and I haven't touched it. This bolt round here is broken. I don't know if I can do anything with it. There's a tie wrap round it. It seems like the previous owner had a good supply of tie wraps and he was gonna use them. <laughs> all right, first off, I'm just gonna put take this sensor off. There we go. And there's not a lot else holding it at this end. So there's just a Jubilee clip here, which is a bit awkward for me to show you on camera. Um, but I'm just going to loosen that off. And then there's this fitting here, and I believe it will just lift off of that. And I'm just going to pop these clips off. So there's another clip down here, another clip at the inside edge. So there's four in total. And this filter is in surprisingly good condition. Oh wow, that's in pretty good nick. It looks like this car was recently serviced. And this is a, a K&N panel filter as well, so somebody's obviously fitted it as an aftermarket improvement. I don't know if K&N give better airflow. Maybe somebody who knows these cars and knows which are good filters these days can let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'll put that off to one side. And you probably heard a clip fall off on the floor a minute ago. It was one of these. So I'm just going to look for it. Because the longer it's on the floor, the less chance you have of finding it. It's like Sod's Law. Aha! I got it before it could slither away. And now I should be able to lift out this bottom uh, box. Okay, so I can see what's going on now and why it's so loose. There should be a bit of a post there that fits down into a rubber grommet and it's smashed off. But everything else under here is looking okay. Although I do have this one wire and the fitting on the end of it is all crushed and it looks like it used to have a switch on it or something. I don't know what that is, uh, but it goes to here. It's like a little plug just here. Okay, so there it is. And it slides from the inside like this going towards the front. And you just have to look out for a metal tab, which is down underneath here, which slides into there as it goes in. There you go, that's a lot better. And you, can you see how this is kind of cut out into a half shape? It's because the bottom half of this is down on that little piece we just fitted. So as we drop this in, you just drop it in onto it. So I'll just drop this filter back in. And have a wrestling match for 20 minutes trying to get the lid on. Okay, maybe not 20 minutes. 
just have this to pop back on otherwise the engine won't be happy and then there's this thing which i know is some kind of an air intake but i'm not sure where it goes and then can you see this uh, panel here which is just kind of locked off at the moment this normally isn't used in the uk and so some countries where they sell the one series and it's a lot hotter there's like a an extra fitting or two that goes here and then it pulls cold air in from in front of the radiator and obviously you can retrofit that uh, so I bought that at the same time as I was buying my other BMW parts okay so here it is it's like a little uh, elbow it's very rubberized you know it's not plastic uh, and you can see it goes on to the end of there and then there's just this little mesh grill thing so on the inside of there where the radiator is I imagine this little mesh grill goes there by the way it's worth mentioning that these little pieces cost about 25 quid from BMW that'll be about 35 US dollars okay so this is where your um, intake should be sitting that runs into your airbox so you can see that's rigid now because I've clipped it on at the back properly and now all we have to do is pop off this little hatch and it just has these little clips and that comes out just like that now we've got this elbow the small side you can see there's like a small rectangle and a big one well the small one goes on to the end of the um, the pipe that runs to your airbox and can you see the little tabs here two of them well there's another two at the back edge as well and they just pop through the corresponding holes on your uh, pipe there and at the same time you have to be kind of feeding this rubber part through this plastic cowling so that's uh, the first part of it done and now we just have this grill to put on the inside okay this only goes on one way because it has some big tabs on one side and little small ones on the other and they correspond to holes that are in this rubber piece so feed it on at the back and then grab that rubber tab to stretch it so you can get those in I'm just going to get some grips on the job here because it's slipping through my fingers there we go so there you have it that's how to fit the BMW hot climate called air intake in the last crashed BMW video we saw that the steering arm had been damaged in the accident so let's get this track control arm off and then we can get it replaced. The first job is to undo this nut here. And with that done we can tap the end of the shaft for the ball joint and that will push it out. What I plan to do is just replace this and remove it from the car as a complete unit. Normally where the inner track rod meets the steering rack you would have a proper boot clip on that. I've only got a tie wrap. Okay. At this point my plan is to reuse the outer track rod with the ball joint on it. So I'm trying to get it undone off of the inner. Oh geez, that's tight. As you can see I put quite a lot of force on that then and I really don't want to strip that out. So in the end, despite my best efforts, unfortunately to no avail, and it sheared off, um, I could have drilled out, re-tapped and done all that sort of stuff, but I'm quite happy to be putting a new one on. It only cost 25 quid, so it didn't seem worth messing around. I bought a new uh, bellows because my old one was split. So I'm just going to pop that on now because I won't be able to get it on later. So even though I bought a new outer and inner tie rod in the end, neither one of them gave me a new one of these knots. So what I'm going to do is just um, remove this one so that then I can use it again. So I just keep my laptop out here in the garage so that I can refer to it quickly when I need to. You can see the outer tie rod here and the locking bolt is number one there you can see that the torque's only 32 newton meters so it's not very high at all i got that technical manual from e-manual online and they're the same manuals that the technicians for the manufacturers use so they've got lots of really great content you can literally just search it up and find whatever you need really so i use them a lot so anyway i've got my smaller torque wrench and i'm going to set it to uh, 32 newton meters 
Okay, so hopefully there's no grit in there now. This job's done now and that tracking should be close enough that I can drive it until I can get the tracking checked. Some people would actually just drive it, you know, as it is uh, because we did get it pretty close just then. But there is the risk of tyre wear and of course that can cost you some money quite quickly. When I got the M135i it had a low tyre. Uh, so obviously I just pumped it up so that I could move the car But what I'm gonna do now while I'm doing the other work is I'm gonna pump this up to a known pressure say 36 psi and then I'm gonna keep an eye on it and see if it holds its pressure and the reason for that is on my last project car the uh, Mercedes E-Class which you'll see on my channel um, I had exactly the same I put a new tire on it because to be honest the tire was in bad condition uh, but then I found uh, there was actually a crack in the alloy, which I then had to have repaired. Now this alloy wheel is on the side of the car that's taken some front end damage. And as you can see, it's a bit chewed up here, which could be just curb damage. Uh, and there's a few other marks. Now it's not obviously really warped or completely uh, knackered. So it could be that this alloy wheel will live again with a refurb. But before I spend 60 quid on a refurb, it'd be useful to know if it's got any other uh, significant damage on it. Like I say, a hairline crack or something like that. But anyway, I'll get this tire pumped up and then I'll come back later and check on it. So at the moment, it's only on 16 PSI. So obviously it is very low. Okay, so that's about 36 PSI. So we'll leave this now for a week while I do the rest of the repairs on the car and then we'll see how we get on. If it's going down, I'll have it checked out by my local tire shop. It was nice to get the steering fixed on the car, but be even nicer when I can start driving it. But parts are starting to trickle in. So for example, this little duct which goes here on the oil cooler and directs the air into it. That's just arrived, it's 35 quid, so not too bad. But one of the difficult things is always working out how it fits, especially when the old ones have been smashed to smithereens. Even so, it shouldn't be too bad because I know that it has to, the bumper has to fit around it. So obviously it's not gonna go on that way because this corner would stick out too much. So it must go like that. It's just a case of, are there clips or screws? Does it snap on? You know, that sort of stuff. I'm really sorry to leave you on that cliffhanger. Will I get the oil cooler ducting on or not? But seriously, I'm super keen to get this video out to you guys. So I have to stop somewhere, get it finished off and get it uploaded. But hopefully you're enjoying this content. And if you are, then hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell. Or maybe even give me a thumbs up to give me a little bit of encouragement. In the meantime, I'll leave you with a few bloopers. Everything doesn't always go to plan. Okay, catch you next time. Thanks for watching. And I think that uh, you push at the back there to release it. No, it doesn't seem to do. Well, maybe you pry upwards. No, you don't. They're always a mystery of these clips. And we missed out some important foot fo footage. <laughs> but to, whoa. <laughs> and what I'm gonna, whoop. Don't want that happening. No, no, no. So oh, that's recording, that's recording. It's how to fit the BMW hot climate, cold air, cold air intake. <laughs>